Onero Critica was meant as the most comprehensive and thorough work on Oneromancy. To achieve such an ambitious project, Artemidorus immediately tackles the most significant question. What is a prophetic dream? The initial 12 sections of the first volume deal with this issue in great detail and they provide an exploration of dream types and interpretation methods. Artemidorus defines two main types of dreams, common dreams and prophetic dreams. It is interesting to know that in the ancient Greek and Latin languages these were distinct words. In Latin, for example, prophetic dreams were called somnium and common dreams were known as insomnium. While ancient scholars were very familiar with the different nature of these dreams, common people couldn't differentiate between the words and used them as synonyms instead. According to Artemidorus, there are two main differences between common and prophetic dreams. The common ones deal with the present and they originate with human nature. In contrast, prophetic dreams are what Artemidorus calls the transformative property of consciousness. They come from the soul and deal with the future. The Oneuromancer gives a very good description of dreams that have no divination value. He says there are two main types of non-prophetic dreams, one caused by the needs of the body and another caused by the needs of the soul. In the first category, he gives examples of how hungry people dream of eating and thirsty folks dream of drinking. Chances are you had such dreams more often than you suspect. Dreaming of urinating, flowing water and bathrooms are very common for those that need to urinate. Dreaming of snow or ice is quite normal for those who experience cold while sleeping. And finally, dreams of physical harm are very common for those that sleep in a bad position. In these cases, dreams can really serve as an alarm signal for the needs of the body. As for dreams caused by the needs of the soul, Artemidorus mentions how people in love constantly dream of their paramours and people who are afraid see the objects of their fears. He says such dreams are nothing more but echoes of existing desires or fears and they have no prophetic power whatsoever. Afterwards, Artemidorus defines the nature of prophetic dreams. He begins with the origins of the Greek word oneros. This is the same word oneromancers use to describe a prophetic dream. According to him, oneros could have two meanings. The first meaning can be translated as to excite the soul. The second meaning is to tell the truth. Both origins of oneros perfectly describe the nature of prophetic dreams. According to Artemidorus, there are two general types of prophetic dreams, literal and allegorical. In the first case, what you see is what will happen. In allegorical dreams though, what you are seeing are mere symbols of what will happen and the dreamer should interpret the symbols to get the real meaning of the dream. However, here comes the big question that every scholar of dreams asks. How do you know what is literal and what is symbolic? Or as Sigmund Freud would phrase it, when is a cigar just a cigar? After all, it would be a shame for an ordinary monster to recognize the difference between a literal and allegorical dream only after it comes true. To be fair, Artemidorus gives one of the most satisfying answers to this apparently age-old question. He says time is essential in differentiating between literal and allegorical dreams. According to him and all authors before him, literal prophetic dreams come true quickly. There is a sense of immediacy to such dreams and the soul uses them to alert the dreamer as directly as possible. Artemidorus says that sometimes such dreams come true in the very moment of their dreaming. In addition, 
He states that there are some exclusions to this rule and time is not always the decisive factor. However, even the exceptions share something in common. Artemidor says these dreams would be indecipherable through reason and rational efforts. That's why the soul shows us the future as it is and it is the only way to keep us alert. In contrast, allegorical dreams are far more complicated to deal with. Artemidorus introduces us to the five types of symbolic dreams defined by the uneromantic profession. They can be personal, non-personal, joint, social and cosmic. Personal dreams concern only the dreamer. In them, the dreamer is the main character, whether they do stuff or something happens to them. In such cases, all the interpretations are about the dreamer. In non-personal dreams, someone else is the main character, provided this someone else is a real person. It doesn't matter how close this person is to the dreamer. They can be a relative or a celebrity from another country. What matters is that they are the focus of the story and all interpretations concern them. Joint prophetic dreams are a combination of personal and non-personal dreams. The interpretations here concern both the dreamer and the other people in the dream. Social dreams concern whole social groups. You can recognize them by the setting. Such dreams are usually set in schools, squares, markets, harbors and other places of social significance. The interpretations of such dreams concern the whole social group. Last but not least, cosmic dreams deal with catastrophes and cataclysms such as earthquakes, droughts, storms, volcano eruptions and so on. Artemidor says these five categories are sort of general guidelines and dreams can often belong in more than one of them. In addition, he supplies two more categories with four types of dreams in each category to further narrow down the possible interpretations. By using these categories and the symbolic interpretations in the book, people can figure out the meaning of a dream through a method of elimination and questioning the dreamer. According to the great Uneromancer, it is paramount to know the dreamer well in order to decipher the true meaning of a dream. The personal interaction here is of utmost importance because an Uneromancer needs to know much more than the age, craft and material well-being of somebody. They need to know what kind of person the dreamer is, the state of their health, even their ethnic and religious background. In fact, the last two were of significant importance. For example, tattoos were a sign of nobility in Thrace and a sign of slavery with the Gets. Therefore, a Thracian would experience a rise in status if they dream of getting a tattoo, while a Get would suffer adverse consequences if they have the same dream. The same goes for myths and fairy tales. Artemidorus knows prophetic dreams often use the plots and characters of ancient stories because people believe in them and they possess a great deal of meaning. That's why it is very important to know the immortal stories and characters that shape the world of dreams. Finally, Artemidorus says that while theoretical preparation can be helpful in interpreting dreams, it is incomparable to practical experience. He goes as far as to say that book knowledge can sometimes distance you from the truth and it is best to trust your own talent and insight. Still, he gives a lot of excellent advice in the book and while I cannot share everything in this video, I selected a few golden pieces for you. For example, don't ever try to decipher a dream that you don't remember in its entirety. It's a fool's errand. Furthermore, if you ever hear speech in your dreams, here is who you can trust completely. According to him, gods come first because lying is foreign to them. That people also tell the truth because they can get no benefit from lying. 
children and old people deserve trust as well. Those that don't deserve trust are actors and eunuchs. The first always lie because they constantly impersonate others. The second lie because of their dual nature, they are neither men nor women. Last but not least, I'm sharing with you pieces of information that should improve your ability to have prophetic dreams. In the fourth secret volume of Onero Critica, the Onero Master shares two fascinating observations from his practice. First, he says that people who lead a life of honor and purity do not have non-prophetic dreams. He says that people who are guided by moral principles do not let desires and fears cloud their dreams. Therefore, all their dreams have a prophetic quality. The second piece of information he shares is even more interesting. According to Artemidorus, people who are familiar with oneromancy and dream interpretation tend to dream in symbols even their non-prophetic dreams. In essence, dreams can learn and adapt thanks to dream interpretation books. You can check my video on the dream dictionary effect to get a more in-depth exploration of this. I hope you liked this investigation into Neurocritica's dream theory. There was just so much that was worth mentioning and there is even more for you to discover if you decide to read the book. Furthermore, I will make another episode on the general content of Neurocritica its historical impact and its impact on dream interpretation as well. As always, if you like this video and you're interested in the marvelous world of dreams, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. This would be a great way to support my work and I surely appreciate it. Thanks for watching.